I have faced the problem with college applications. I cannot tell you how many essays I've written, edited, and rewritten over and over again trying to convince colleges why I should pay them $75,000 a year to attend their institution. And it doesn't help that while this process, my parents are constantly coming up to me asking me, have I finished that essay yet or how am I doing? And I know that they do it just to check on my well-being, but as every student in this room knows, finishing college applications or any assignment is hard enough and we surely don't need any added distractions. But it's not my parents' fault, because I haven't explained to them the copious amounts of work that I've been doing. This misunderstanding between my parents and I is because of lack of communication. This phenomenon that I've identified not only explains why there's a lack of communication and a misunderstanding between parents and their students, but between everyone. It's a communication disconnect, and it happens because there's a clear divide between younger and older generations. And I'm not trying to call anyone over the age of 50 old, but it was a different time. Adults in the 80s grew up in a world of newfound technology that hadn't reached its full potential. And this correlates directly with the fact how times have changed. With new advances in education, students are allowed to explore a plethora of various internships, AP classes, and other educational opportunities to better their futures. Back then, these fundamental classes were instituted, and most students didn't have access to these resources. But with a skyrocket in education also comes a skyrocket in competition. School more than ever has become more and more competitive, but this point is largely dismissed by older generations. <laughs> this point is largely dismissed by older generations, and the education gaps correlates largely with the gap between generations. Now, the generation gap isn't something new. It's been around for decades, and it, it explains the misunderstanding between generations. It arises from the separate set of circumstances each of the generations faced during their youth. One of the most noticeable gaps was during war times, from World War II to the Vietnam War. See, World War II veterans, now fathers during the Vietnam War, were, pro were urging their sons to go into battle and to fight for their country. But the new generation protested against this. They burned their draft cards and heavily protested against the war. This was only happening because the new generation didn't live through World War II. They didn't experience what their fathers were going through. But let's be honest, this isn't something that's been happening for decades, it's been happening for centuries. A new generation comes, doesn't understand the old, and protests against what they're saying before, before they even have time to explain themselves. And this is only worsening with technology, as ideas are easily spread across the internet and leave almost no room from anyone to grow from the past. A prime example of this is the OK Boomer meme. Everyone in this room has probably heard someone said it, or has even said it themselves. But this phrase is often used to dismiss what the baby boomer generation is saying because the newer generations don't hold those same values. But it's not just that they don't hold those same values, they don't realize how they were generated. The baby boomer generation grew up in a time where segregation was still legal, where it was acceptable to be homophobic, where if you weren't discriminating against someone, then there was something wrong with you but that was society back then. And I'm by no means saying that it's okay now, but it is crucial to understand the circumstances of one's youth before dismissing what they have to say. Because the truth is, the older generation might want to learn. And the, fee the internet has become a feeding ground for the youth, where it's acceptable to dismiss someone's opinions before even talking to them or attempting to educate them. It's a communication disconnect because of the sole problem that it brings. The fact that we don't communicate with each other. The lack of discussion leaves room for the disconnect and it makes sure that the generations don't understand one another. And we've all experienced this before. Whether it's talking about politics with our family or something simple at the dinner table. There have always been disagreements because of this gap. Because each side holds their values close. Neither side wants to be proven wrong, and even less people want to adapt to new ideas or take into account old opinions. But it is vital to understand each other's opinions to spark growth. But the way that we can do this is through talking. But before I even bring up a conversation about how we have to create a dialogue, we need to go back to the basics. So the first rule that we all learned, the golden rule, to treat others the way that we want to be treated. But there's something crucially wrong this, to this rule that is leading to miscommunication. We need to start altering this rule, not to how we want to be treated, but how they want to be treated. We cannot assume that both sides are the same, because they are not. When we're talking about an intergenerational gap, there are hundreds upon thousands of things that make us vastly different from one another. Communicating and not making assumptions is something that needs to be upheld. Understand, understanding each other's reasoning is something that will foster better communication and lead to growth. 
Now, the idea of sitting down and having a difficult conversation might not sound appealing to some, but it's vital to improve society. So, to make it appealing to everyone else in this room, I suggest that we take it one question at a time. Whether that question be over text or in person, but it needs to be a starter question. And that question should be, what do you think? By instigating this question, we're allowing for both sides to see each other's reasoning. Humanity is constantly growing, adapting, and evolving to new things, and it's hard to keep track of everything that's been done. And by opening this dialogue, we're allowing for each generation to see what's happened and what's happening. By allowing each side to open up about their opinions and express them is something that is vitally important to change the future. Creating an intergenerational conversation is something that can spark growth and change the future in how we think. Allowing each side to express their dialogue is something that is so vitally important. So I urge everyone in this room to go out and have these conversations, whether it be over text or in person, something in your own personal lives or something that you see in the news and media. But I urge you to go out and have these conversations with someone younger than you or older than you and learn something from one another. Thank you.